Previously on board. Now we speak to the president of the South African Rugby Union, Mr. Oregon Hoskins. But under circumstances that I'm sure, um, Oregon, you, you prefer not to be talking about, um, we're learning today, of course, the death of Peter Mayamane, the Bach technical advisor between 2007 and 2011 last year. Actually, he passed away uh, this morning. Very sad times at Saru. Yes, it uh, was with sadness that I learned about uh, Peter's uh, obviously untimely death. Peter's uh, fairly young still. Um, I think he's in the, in the, in the region of about 40, 41 years old. Um, very sad news um, that, I, that I got from our officers. And, uh, you know, I have uh, extended our condolences and sympathies to the, to the Mayamane Maya family. Um, we heard from his brother, Joe, that they think it was a heart attack. Do you, do you know any further details? No, not at all. Um, I have been told by our media people, Andy Cahoon, that uh, Peter was admitted to hospital and after a very short illness had, uh, had passed away. I'm not aware of any further details at this stage. Oregon, he was always a, you know, the, a fantastic guy. He had such a, I suppose you could really describe him as, as being a larger-than-life personality, don't you think? He, was, he had such a special way with people, didn't he? Absolutely. The time that I uh, worked with him um, in the four-year period, um, 2007 to 11, um, you know, it, it really came across as being um, really somebody that uh, enjoyed what he was doing, passionate about uh, rugby, about coaching, and about the role that he had to play in the team. Um, everybody uh, in the team and in the squad really enjoyed uh, Peter around because he always had some something lighthearted to say. Um, even at the, at the tough, toughest of times, and, and you know, everybody knows how tough times can be in the national setup. So, Peter was always a joy to be around and uh, really a, a, a really great um, character that will be sorely missed. Um, yeah, well, very, as you say, very, very sad times indeed. Uh, I was listening to uh, the call when Johnny phoned you to set up the interview, Oregon. He uh, said it, or we asked you to dial him back on a Durban number. What are you doing in, in Durban? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm not travelling um, for once uh, with the team down under. Um, the deputy president, Mark Alexander, has gone. Um, you know, for for uh, Sanzar meetings that are also taking place right now as we speak. Um, I've just got a report from um, from our delegates there, Mark Alexander and Yuri Ru, who's the CEO. Oh. That uh, they've had very positive Sanzar meetings, and and obviously um, we we'll, we'll wait to get a full full report, but. Um, it looks promising, um, uh, you know, and I don't want to let the cat out of the bag and talk uh, out of turn, but, um, you know, I've been told that, uh, you know, the, our sales of partners are seriously uh, prepared to look at, um, you know, the, the uh, sales of um, setup uh, so that, uh, you know, we, we can be accommodated uh, as quickly as possible in terms of having, having six franchises. So that's really positive news. Um, you know, and, and at this stage, I, I certainly don't want to jump the gun because yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sure there will be an official um, communique coming out of Sanzar itself. But I think just from a South African perspective, I, I think that it's, um, it's such an important issue for us in, in South Africa. And, yes. uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this in all, uh, in all innocence, um, that, uh, that the vibe uh, coming out of the meeting from Yuri Ru and Mark Alexander today was that um, uh, Australia and New Zealand are are quite positive in, in terms of seriously wanting to look at, at the situation because um, there's also a feeling from them that, uh, you know, that uh, rugby, there's too much rugby in terms of uh, the way the present schedule uh, goes. And, uh, you know, um, all, all three countries are really having to uh, count the costs in terms of injuries and, and, and that sort of thing. So the feeling I have um, from, from the terms of set up is that, um, you know, our counterparts, are prepared to seriously buckle down, look at look at things, and see if we can be accommodated earlier than um, uh, you know uh, has been uh, designed uh, at this stage. So it's, it's a positive um, um, feedback from 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 down under, um, and I certainly don't want to uh, you know um, cause uh, problems or uh, prematurely saying things out of yeah. uh, out of turn. Um, all, all I want to say is that uh, you know I'm I'm, I'm pleased that. Uh, that, that is a positive vibe coming from down under, and, and obviously the the, uh, the minutia uh, you know needs to be spelled out uh, uh, more properly. The, the fans are 
to invent for itself. Well, listen, um, would you like Josh Strauss's number? Because he leaves for Scotland uh, <laughs> like on the weekend. So if you probably had to phone him and tell him that there was a chance that the Lions could be coming back. I'm sure he'd stay. <laughs> Yeah, it would be it would be good, eh? It would be good, and I'm sure you know not just Josh, but we have so many South African players flying their trade in Europe, in France, in uh, in the UK, Ireland, etc. Um, and you know, if that if, if that does happen, uh, obviously it will be great to have a whole lot of those players back playing in. Uh, in a six franchise in Super Rugby. Can I just ask you in all honesty though, um, and I, I don't want you to give away anything and I don't want to put you in a position yet, I just want your opinion. Can South Africa afford to have six teams in the competition? Yeah, I've, I've, I've you know, contrary to uh, the, the, the sentence that I, that I regularly hear, um, that we don't have uh, have the, the quality of players. I think quality is determined by the quality competition that you're allowed to play in. Um, I think that we have um, so many uh, quality players, raw, raw, raw um, capital, human capital in terms of rugby playing um, ability. And I think that if given the opportunity to play at, uh, at an elite level, I, I, I sincerely believe that uh, we do actually have the players. Um, we, we've always had, um, you know, three franchises that have done exceptionally well. Um, and I think that's, that's largely because of the, um, you know, uh, the amount of money that, uh, that they have. So if, if, um, you know, if we can obviously get uh, more resources into uh, some of the franchises that, that we do play at, at the elite level like Super Rugby, um, I do believe that we, we actually do have uh, the ability to play um, six, com- uh, you know, uh, competitive teams. So I, I, I think that my answer is a simple yes, and uh, I sincerely believe that Given the opportunity to play at the highest level, um, we will actually have six very, very competitive franchises. Regan, thank you very much for taking time off your busy schedule to join us. We really appreciate it. And, you know, as passionate as you are about rugby and we chatted about other things, but really we appreciate you paying tribute, of course, uh, to the passing of, a, of a, a really great person in Peter Maimani. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Take thank care. You, Cheers, Regan. Regan. Fridays live on balls.co.za. Balls.co.za.